Dragon Ball has been a huge part of my life. All the way back when I was watching Dragon Ball Z in the early 2000s, all the way up to this very day. And this year we had the devastating news that Akira Toriyama had passed away. I was really upset hearing the news. Like, I'm not exaggerating when I say legitimately I would not be the person I am now without their creative works, without Dragon Ball. I grew up with the show, and not just me, my friends at school as well. I was friends with my next door neighbor's kids, and I'd go over there and watch with them. And we'd always get so hyped for the big fights and the visuals, and then I'd get to go to school and nerd out about it with my friends to the point where we would like, you know, roll play some stuff in the playgrounds during, you know, break and he'd be a bit cringe, but you, you know, we loved it. We watched the show and we played the games. And as I grew older and the series ended, I still kept up with the games. <laughs> Even though I'd played the same story mode over and over again, it was still really fun to see how the next game would improve on the formula of the fighting and the visuals. And even to this day, I still enjoy pretty much anything Dragon Ball that comes out. Yes, even Dragon Ball The Breakers. What can I say? It's a guilty pleasure. I think it's fun, okay? But not only have the shows and the games kept me entertained over the years, but it has been the catalyst of some really strong friendships I've made. And hey, I do also have some personal stake in it, where because of Dragon Ball, a specific thing really shone a spotlight on me and was able to introduce me to a lot of new eyes. So yeah, the man just happened to be behind one of the most influential pieces of media in my life ever. And when I heard the news, I, I'd felt a sadness I, I didn't know I could feel for someone who I'd never met. People like to use the phrase, like, it crushed my childhood. And I always thought that was a little bit, like, over the top, maybe an exaggeration, but, uh... Whew. Yeah, now I, I get it. So before we start talking about the video game that I'm going to be talking about today, I, I just wanted to reflect a little bit with that story and to say thank you. Akira Toriyama. I didn't know you, but you made something that will never be replaced. You made something that will remain in my memory and my heart until the end. Thank you for that, and may you rest in peace. With all of that reflecting, it did actually make me think. What was the first Dragon Ball game I had ever played? Of course, it didn't take very long for the light bulb to turn on. I specifically remember going into Tesco, going to the gaming section, and finding this game for the PlayStation 1. Ooh, it has Goku on it. I like Goku. I want this game. What's it called? Dragon Ball Final Bout. Oh, no! I don't remember enjoying it that much, I'm going to be honest, but it has been a hot minute since I last played it. I do think it might have been because back then I didn't really understand what I was doing or what was going on, so I am going to go into this with an open mind and hope for the best. Dragon Ball Final Bout came out on the PlayStation in 1997, with apparently some reprints a few years later, and was published by Bandai. The game starts up with this amazing intro animation. <laughs> Oh my god, this intro gets me so hyped every time. I have only just started and I already have a lot I want to talk about. Can I just point out that like 80 to 90% of these Dragon Ball games always nail the intro. Bonus points if they go for the anime style. I've always been a bit hit and miss on the 3D stuff. God, this, this intro is so nostalgic for me. Even these days, I still go back and listen to this and Budokai 3's openings. But this is actually a great moment to give a bit of context about how this game confused the hell out of Kid Me. You know, I got this being a fan of Dragon Ball Z, but like, I swear I remember finding this game around the same time that the show hadn't even got to Super Boo yet. So I'm watching this intro and I'm like, huh, that looks like Boo, but he's like not big. And is that Gohan? Gohan don't look like that. This is so weird. Why is he a child now? Also, why is Goku wearing a different outfit? Oh, and now he's a child. Why is everyone turning into kids? Oh. 
Oh, Trunks is there. Okay, cool. Who are you? Man, I had so many questions. <laughs> Naturally, many years later, everything clicked. And of course, now I know that the ending parts were GT related. So yeah, kind of wish I could have stayed confused, to be honest. But yeah, absolutely solid intro. Gets me pumped every time. And it's just short enough that I do not mind listening to it every time I boot the game up. I'm not sure I can say the same thing for whatever America got. I actually wanted to check out the US copy just because I remember the voices being different, but this? I don't know, doesn't hit as strong to me. Though that could just be I'm used to the Japanese version at this point. Yeah, I just wasn't expecting it. But it did give me the idea to ask, if you've dabbled in Dragon Ball games, what's your favorite intro? Also, would you have preferred to have Japanese voices or a dub? Because we got it in Japanese. <laughs> But in the US, it was dubbed, and I was not ready for this. This is going to be a problem. Ha! Hurry up and show me your real strength! <laughs> it just, it sounds so weird to me. The thing is, even back then, this would be strange. I'm used to the Funimation dub at this point, but when I was watching Dragon Ball Z growing up, I was watching the ocean dub. So even back then this would have been confusing because I'm used to It's over 9,000! And not I won't let you interfere. The thing is, after I've heard a lot of the dialogue, it's not even that it's bad. In fact, I think it's pretty decent. It's just so strange to hear these characters so different. You've still got a ways to go before you reach the level I'm at. I wanted to spend some time really going over my memories of when I first loaded this game up and how I feel about the introduction to it all. Because that's where I feel my nostalgia resonates the most, in the intro and the presentation of it all. Because the actual playing the game part is shit. To no one's surprise, and given the content of Dragon Ball in general, it's a fighting game. And at first glance, it actually looks alright. I really dig the model work. You shouldn't have a problem identifying these characters. And for PS1 models, there's a reasonable amount of detail in there. Can't always say the same about the stages. While a nice chunk are fairly fine, there are a few that just are not good. Like I get it's supposed to be Namek mid-explosion, right? But it just looks like PNGs of rocks and a gradient. Bum, 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 bum. Ba -bum -bum -bum. And the final touch. Not that you ever get a choice in the matter, considering I don't think at any point you get to decide what stage you're fighting on. I think it might be context sensitive depending on the characters you're either playing as or going against. I don't actually know if that's how it works, but given the music does something similar, it's a hunch. But yeah, overall I'd say the game looks great. Easily recognizable. You could show anyone this clip and they would say it's a fight between Goku and the <laughs> Vegetto. It threw me for a loop the first time, but I checked, and apparently it is correct. At least in terms of direct translations, anyway. It's Funimation that changed it to the way I'm used to it now. Even today, I'm still learning. <laughs> Another place this game excels at is absolutely the music. Composed by Kenji Yamamoto. The soundtrack is so high energy, I love it. Most of the tracks would fit the high impact fights you'd expect from Dragon Ball. But the thing is, Final Bout introduced to me one track that has stuck with me since I heard it. And that is Super Saiyan Trunks theme, Hikari no Willpower. I enjoyed this track so much when I was young. This was around the same time I was learning to play the keyboard. I taught myself how to play the melody from this song. I legit would delay the fight just to hear this song. It also has a great song for the credits, which you heard at the beginning of the video. This is definitely the highlight of the game. What I find amusing is the music's got a fast beat to it, and I don't know if you've been paying attention to the gameplay, but it's not... Well, it, it's just not. Unfortunately, this is where the praise ends and it starts to get a bit rough. Final Bout offers an arcade mode, a tournament mode for multiplayer purposes, and a mode they call Build Up. Arcade mode is pretty simple. You just pick a character and fight your way through the other characters, which you'll then realize isn't a lot because you only get to choose 10 fighters to start with. And yeah, you do unlock more as you go, but it's not a lot more. It's like six. And they are just Super Saiyan versions of the already existing characters, except with technically Vegetto. Now there is a secret unlockable seventh character, 
but good luck doing that. Because in order to do so, you need to beat arcade mode on hard difficulty without losing a continue and then defeating Super Baby with practically a perfect. You can't take too much damage in this fight. Then Super Saiyan 4 Goku will come out you defeat him and you unlock Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Just another example of something I'm kind of glad I didn't get when I was young because I would have had so many questions. A little reminder, if you want to get these characters every time you load the game up, you have to do this every time you load the game up. The rest of them, fine. Super Saiyan 4 Goku? Nah, I'm good. Don't get me wrong, he's cool. Like, that is all kinds of awesome right there, but uh, not worth the headache. Next up is tournament mode, which sounds promising, but then turns out to be disappointing when you realize it is just for multiplayer and you need eight people. Well, I mean, technically you don't, you could do a bunch of 1v1s, but this mode is still specifically multiplayer. Hey, but I do like how the last fight is on a sunset version of the war tournament arena. The only time we see that map, by the way. And then last, but definitely not least, build up mode, where you pick a character and essentially train them to become stronger as you fight through throughout the ranks. This is probably the most interesting mode and the reason why you would come back, as you can actually save your progress and use secret unlockable characters and it still allows you to use them, even when you don't have them anymore. But that's it. It's so bare bones. And I mean, don't get me wrong, right? Like, I get that it's a PlayStation 1 game. You can only do so much with it. And if I recall, it was the very first fully 3D Dragon Ball Z game. So yeah, I do want to cut them some slack, but oh my god. The gameplay just ruins it all for me. Okay, let's actually talk about this. You can punch kick, guard, and key blast. You can also dash towards enemies and initiate flight. But the main issue you're gonna find doing any of these things is this game is slow. I don't know if it translates well over video, but every action you do has like a strange one second wind up. And what sucks is this alone completely ruins the feel of the entire game. Like if this was the only issue, it would still be bad. It isn't, and we'll get to that. But it's the worst when a character jumps over another one. For them to turn around and face each other is a prime example of what I mean. Uh, hang on a minute. I want to punch you. No, I want to kick. No, no, come back. No, no, come back. I want to. I want to punch. I want to punch you. I want to punch you. You get what I mean, though, right? It's really a not. Oh, sorry. I'm facing the wrong way. You know what I'm talking about? The other part that like completely ruins this all is the fact that hitboxes are so inconsistent. Legit, you will have a battle advantage playing Kid Goku. No wait, sorry, Little Goku. Much like other fighting games that you're used to, you'll be able to initiate super attacks with quarter circle forward motions. Sometimes. Each character picks from a selection of special move button combinations, which the manual does tell you. Well, except for unlockable characters, but for the most part, if they are a Super Saiyan version of another character, they have similar movesets. And these are great. They deal a lot of damage, if the game decides you actually hit. I was in training mode, using Goku's Spirit Bomb, which ain't in the manual, by the way, and standing still, it missed! It even hit his face! Like, it feels awful. It can look good, it can sound good, but if it plays bad, there is little to no recovery. All of this can be summarized as unfortunate because the game does try to do some interesting things with the combat, one of them being the demo system. What that does is turn your super attacks used at a certain distance into cutscenes. The enemy then gets a brief window to input something as a counter of sorts or a guard. The downside being sometimes you have to have the reaction time of ultra instinct or just mash the buttons and hope for the best. One of the outcomes you can get is firing an attack back and then you get to legitimately beam struggle. Even back then, they understood the importance of this mechanic. The other mechanic is the meteor system, and I'm a bit lukewarm on this one. A timed hit sends the enemy flying, and you start playing like a rock, paper, scissors game. Though nothing on screen really showcases this, you're supposed to be pressing buttons and a direction to send the enemy flying and doing various moves, while the person being hit is supposed to counter with similar button presses. I don't really 
really use it myself, and I think the thing I can compare it to the closest is that mechanic in Budokai 3 where you have to match the buttons. And you know what? Another credit to the game is if you don't like the demo system or the meteor system, you can just turn them off. The thing is, I could have seen this being a big deal at the time, especially compared to what came before it in Ultimate Battle 22. Which I also have, by the way and that sucks. It really just hasn't aged well. People that disliked it back then will likely still dislike it, and people that did like it back then, well, I definitely encourage you to try it again to see if it holds up for you. Honestly, I think a big part of it now is that we've been spoiled on really good Dragon Ball Z fighting games. Beautiful looking, amazing sounding, fast, satisfying, incredible love letters to this series. And maybe Final Bout was just a stepping stone towards these. And if that is the case, then I think it should stay there as a stepping stone. There is certainly nostalgia there. The music, the intro, yep, uh, that's it. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, I just don't think it's good. Of course, after all is said, this is just my opinion on the game, and I'm sure there are some people out here that absolutely love it. And if that is you, then hell yes, I'm glad to hear it. But it is a rough experience, especially now. But hey, I can appreciate it for perhaps being a step in the evolution of the Dragon Ball fighting games. And for that, it does have my respect. But like always, I'd love to know what you have to say about Dragon Ball Final Bout. Did you play it when it first came out? Or if you're not old enough for that, have you gone back to take a look at it now? I'd love to hear what you have to say. Also, some of the details of my story might be a little spotty in terms of like my memory of it all, especially the point in which I was watching Dragon Ball when I got the game, because, well, <laughs> it was a long time ago. I just remember being very confused as a kid. It was a wild time. <laughs> but those were my memories of Dragon Ball Final Bout for the PlayStation. I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode of Pixelated Memories, and I'm glad to be back. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey, thank you so much for watching, and thank you guys for supporting me through all of this. And hey, thank you to everyone who's just been here. Your time means everything to me. And I do appreciate everyone who helps me as well with a little bit more. But hey, I suppose I should say I'm back. And if you missed the last two videos I posted, which were, you know, a little bit ago now, the two will be linked up there. I am gonna be trying to get my stuff back to normality. So like lighting and stuff might be weird going forward for a little bit until I get it all figured out. But hey, hopefully you'll be along for the ride. Like and subscribe.